by saying, I really am surprised to see so many black men here today. That's right. I am. That's right. With, with, with all the recent reports, particularly the New York Times report, you know, implying that all black men are part of the criminal justice system and we're the wretched of the earth. I'm really surprised. I thought we were all in jail. Did they open up the jails today? How you all get here? Really, how did you get here? If we're all in jail and destroying ourselves. But let me suggest that these statistics that we repeatedly hear, we heard them again in the New York Times, one third of our black men unemployed. Our black men represent 60% of the prison population, but only 5% of US society. And on and on and on and on. Well, we cannot buy into these statistics that these social scientists and the media likes to project. We've made much us. progress. We have. I see you don't clap, but we've made much progress. You need me to spell it out? You need me to go back to segregation when you couldn't even lift up your eyes to look a white man in the face? And now they're working for us in many instances? We've made progress, and I believe we'll continue to make progress if we will organize a movement to obtain justice and opportunity for the black men in our society. And as, and as the man goes in our civilization, their goals, our community, our nation, and our world. So we need a focused movement because I believe that we can win this movement just as we have won every movement in the past. And we have. We've won everything we fought for. Emancipation was our first fight. Won that. Emancipation from slavery. Jim Crow, segregation was our next fight. Won that. Civil rights was our next struggle. Won that. Voting Rights Act was our next struggle. Won that. Education and the desegregation of schools on the ground versus the Board of Education, that was our struggle. Won that. So I suggest to you, we can win this struggle like we've won the previous struggles in our past. Our challenge, our challenge, however, is to maintain this progress and avoid the violent and self-destructive, self-defeating culture that is waging a war for the minds and souls of our black men. That's our challenge. And the fact is, Brothers and sisters, all this progress I just mentioned is in jeopardy. It's in jeopardy of being wiped out. And it's in jeopardy not so much because of what the right-wing conservative movement and politicians are doing to us. We know where they're coming from. We know that they view this as a capitalist, competitive society and quite frankly, you must understand that they don't want you competing with them because they saw what you did in sports and entertainment when the playing field was empty. You dominated the image. You know, because it's hard to discriminate on that basketball court. You got two hoops and a ball. It's hard to discriminate on that television when you're entertaining millions of people who love you despite any other stereotypes they might have. It's hard to discriminate on that paper when you're writing beautiful stories for society to follow. Indeed, as they project our young people as thugs and criminals, the fact is most of our young people are doing the right thing. Indeed, many of them are leading the world. Everywhere around the world, in Japan, they're wearing shan -jan. In Africa, they're wearing uh, uh, rock away, following the culture of our young people. They dominate culture worldwide. We know they dominate athletics, but they can do more than run.
run and jump and sing and dance. They also dominate politics, disproportionate to their age. When you look at the youngest congressman in America, it's Jesse Jackson and Harold Ford Jr. When you look at one of the youngest U.S. senators in America, it's Barack Obama. When you look at the youngest big city mayor in America, it's Kwame Kilpatrick. With all the progress our earlier generation made, we cannot allow the clock to be turned back. Brothers and sisters, 41 years after the civil rights struggle which brought us all the gains I mentioned, we are once again locked in a struggle for our survival. And you know, I must tell you, some of that is our fault. Because we no longer have to march against white folks calling us dogs and niggas. Our young folks call each other dogs and niggas as terms of endearment. <laughs> so we must tell our young folks, don't you let people and call yourselves dogs and niggas. Don't you wear your pants down below your butt like you have no respect for yourselves. Pull up your pants. That's right. Straighten up yourself and look presentable like you have some pride and dignity and stop degrading your mother, your sister, and your sisters. That's what we must sit out there together. So everybody in the and I thought, we no longer have to uh, uh, march against the KKK. You know, we just march against the KKK, they killing us off, da, 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 da. Well, we didn't put the KKK out of business, quite frankly. We killing each other so quickly they can't even get to it. They say, well, these Negroes killing each other so fast, we might as well go and close up shop. <laughs> they run them out of business. And so we can't blame and point the finger at someone else. But by the same token, we can't take all the blame for our condition. Black men are not volunteering to go to jail. That's for sure. In New York, where 50% of the black men are unemployed, I assure you, they want to go to work. In many ways, however, quite frankly, I believe that our black men have been set up for failure by a government which has invested more in incarcerating our black men than in educating our black men. So once again, I'll say it again, you can take it back. I believe that the government of the United States has invested more in incarcerating our black men than in educating our black men. And I'm not just spitting out rhetoric. I'm not just talking stuff. I'm a lawyer. I brought my evidence. I can prove my case. <laughs> Since 1980, the federal prison budget has increased by over 300 percent, while the education budget has barely kept up with the rate of inflation. Tell me where they invested their money. Indeed, in most states in this country, the prison budget has increased nearly 10 times more than the education budget in the last 20 years. 10 times more increased funding for incarceration than for education. 